Hello songwriters, Stanton West here and today we will be exploring ways to break down the walls and bust through writer's block. Breaking through writer's block in this session of Songwriter's Masterclass. The opposite of being blocked is letting it flow. Often it is a mindset or a pattern we are stuck in and we stop ourselves from allowing ourselves to get tuned in, tapped in, and turned on to the flow state where ideas come easily. Today we will discuss ideas and strategies so that we may never be stuck or clogged up again. At the end of this lecture, I will share my number one secret to writing songs. It has to do with cooperation and has helped me find inspiration and craft it into an epic song. Until then, here's some thoughts to get you in the mindset of writing great songs. There's a lot of information covered here, so I recommend taking notes and watching this multiple times. Each time you watch it, you will retain something new. I have also provided templates and worksheets of songwriting prompts in the download section for you to use. Uh, feel free to doodle. I know that helps me in listening. So here we go. The Song Well. Imagine songs deep in a well. And when given the proper tools, you can tap into that well. The more you do it, the more it flows. And with practice, you will eventually become a flowing spring. Tap into the well and let the songs flow. There is one thing that every great songwriter in the history of the world has in common. One great mindset that once they've mastered it, they became magnificent. I call that way of thinking the art of not caring, or the art of being willing to be imperfect. Once they realized they had a gift to share with the world, they boldly put it out there. We must dare greatly. They believed enough in what they had to share, not to care what others would think. If they did care, they overcame it and they shared it anyway. We must dare, we must not care, and we must share. The fact is, you need to produce mediocre songs so that you can get better. The first song I ever wrote was terrible, but I wrote with purpose. I had a muse. I had something to say. The song started with the first two chords I'd ever learned on guitar, the A chord and the E chord. It was called Angie, starts with A and ends with E, <laughs> just like the chords. It went something like, Angie starts with A and ends with E. Apple starts with A and ends with E. Ale starts with A and ends with E. Articulate starts with A and ends with E. Approachable, appreciative starts with A and ends with E. Aardvark does not start with A and end with E. Awesome. Angie is awesome. Starts with A and ends with E. Are you going to the store? Will you pick me up something nice? Starts with A and ends with E. Asshole. Angie's not an asshole. Starts with A and ends with E. I told you it was bad. Over time, I would go on to write more songs about Angie the love of my life. Each one got a little better, until over time I wrote a song that people really connected with. As a side note, the song was so bad that I was even banned from playing in a brew pub in Oregon for playing that song. Oh, there's Angie. Starts with A and ends with E. A hundred bad songs. Nobody starts out instantly perfect. It takes practice and dedication. You need to write 100 bad songs before you can get a good one, or at least 10 to 1. Consider a faucet that hasn't been used in a while. When you turn it on, the water may be dirty or rusty from sediment. Once it flows for a while, 
the water becomes clear and becomes potable. Many times I will write a song or songs I'm not happy with, but in that practice I find one little gem amidst them that I use to build an entirely new song that I'm ecstatic about. Keep everything you write in journals so you can go back to them when you are looking for ideas for songs. I've also found that an idea I thought was dumb when I wrote it was actually pretty awesome when I would go back and look at it one, five, or even ten years later. My oldest daughter was gifted a book from her auntie when she was three years old. The book was called Ish. The word ish is added to adjectives to form adjectives which indicate that someone or something has a quality to some extent. For example, something that is large-ish is fairly large. You know, like the shirt is pinkish or the man in the green suit is leprechaun-ish. The children's book concept is that art, a painting in this case and songwriting in mine, does not have to be exact or literal to be good. The value of it is that it is, it is discernible as an abstract artistic representation of an idea. It is conceptual, and conceptual is fine. The light of the moon is not the moon. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, you must be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, heaven is a conceived place on earth, just like hell. If you stop yourself from creating because you don't make a song perfect, your life will be hellish. In my song, The River Knows the Route, I have a line that says, Hell is knowing who you are and not living that way. I know that I am a songwriter and embracing that feeling. And well, that feels heavenly. Take what you like and leave the rest. I have heard that there were only five original songs ever written. The rest are just variations of those five original songs. For example, how many songs are there about love? The most common subject, song subject there is. Many people fall in love, but everyone experiences love differently. Love is the number one song topic in all of history. Ironically, the second most common song subject is heartbreak. <laughs> wah, wah. If you write songs, you are going to end up borrowing ideas from other songs. It's just the way it is. Have you ever heard the phrase, steal like an artist? I'm not talking about outrage, outright plagiarism or sampling. <laughs> I'm talking about what I call, take what you like and leave the rest. Here's a confession. My song, Dig a Hole, is the same chord structure as Both Hands by Ani DeFranco. There is no shame in taking things from songs you like and putting your own twist on them. Simple is better. Have you heard the phrase, three chords in the truth? Oftentimes, simpler is better. Especially if you have a strong message, you don't want to clutter it up with a bunch of complex chord changes and avant-garde colorations. I've heard some great songs that had only one chord. Don't dumb it down, but don't make it unnecessarily complicated. And be authentic. Ask yourself this question and answer honestly. Do you like the sound of your voice? I know that it took me a long time to be able to listen to a recording of myself singing and not cringe. Songwriting isn't about that. Songwriting, my friends, is about your message. Bob Dylan himself knows that. He has a terribly unique style of singing, but that never stopped him from sharing his message. He owned it, and the world admired him for it. Be yourself, and people will like you for who you are. Be authentic. 
people will notice and naturally relate to your songs and your point of view. Active inspiration. So how do you get in the mood to write a song? Start by freeing yourself from distraction. Turn off your phone, find a quiet space, and find the time. Take a 24-hour vow of silence. 24-hour vow of silence. Stare out the window. Let your mind wander. Go for a drive. Go for a walk. Go for a jog. The key is to make time to write. Find a quiet space where you cannot be interrupted. Don't be easily distracted by texts or phone calls or kids or social media notifications. The best songs are written when your mind is left to wander. If you get bored, remember, only boring people get bored. Interesting people use that time to create songs. I will share some prompts to get you get your creative juices flowing, like a mountain stream during the spring thaw, cool and rushing. Song prompts. Why are song prompts useful? Prompts help you write quicker. The more you use them, the more you write, and the faster you get. They help you build up your catalog because it makes you more prolific. They get you out of your comfort zone, and life starts outside of your comfort zone. A prompt can keep you from relying on the same patterns or ruts you've been stuck in. They keep you innovative and resilient. They help put some separation between you and your songs by exercising your skills without getting too vulnerable. Uh, this is valuable because holding your songs too sacred can sometimes keep you from writing or sharing them at all. And if you are here listening to this, then I know that you take your songwriting seriously enough that your songs should be heard. When songwriting to a prompt, you'll want to approach it with an open headspace. You're going to want to listen to what the prompt is saying. Listen for what the prompt is telling you, not what you want to hear. Use a prompt to help you write new songs and to get out of a rut. A prompt is whispering to you. It implores you to leave your old go-to stories behind. You may write a song you wouldn't normally write. This is the beauty of trying new things and getting outside of that comfort zone. You're often going to write something you wouldn't have even thought about if the prompt had not encouraged you to do, to do it. Follow the magic. Use prompts and relate them to your own life experiences. Songwriting can be very cathartic. It's basically therapy. You may be surprised what you dig up. You may stumble upon a very important song that you needed to write for a long time. I have often found that when I am writing a song that I am not clear on what it's about, it ends up being a pathway for my subconscious to communicate to me what has been preoccupying my mind. Co-writing. I recently became open to the idea of co-writing songs. I was always kind of snobby and attached to my own process, but after I tried it, I was amazed at how collaborating with others on a song exponentially makes it better. Find someone you trust and go for it. Using prompts make you a better co-writer. Writing to a prompt is like writing with a co-writer who has their own amazing ideas that never that you never would have thought of without them or that person or that prompt it's good to practice and it primes you for the idea of actually writing uh co-writing with a, with a person so here we go here's some prompts try these ideas out uh to help you find inspiration watch movies or documentaries and take notes 
Read books, how to's, self improvement, fiction, non fiction, biographies, whatever. Feed your brain information to ponder. Look up words in the dictionary and write out the definitions. For example, the word juggernaut, the definition, a terrible, irresistible disaster. I used that in a song verbatim, and people loved it. Open up your favorite search engine and look up word lists for a specific thing you are writing about. Type in any topic followed by the word or the words word list. You can watch TED Talks on YouTube. Listen to Abraham Hicks interviews on YouTube. Write a letter to someone you are frustrated with. I once wrote a letter to someone I was frustrated with and I put it in a song and then the person I was frustrated with heard that song and was like, yeah, man, I feel ya. <laughs> it was amazing. All right. So movies, books, dictionaries, word lists, TED Talks, Abraham Hicks, or write a letter. Just a few ideas. Free writing. Free write. That's it. Just write and keep going. Don't judge. Don't stop. Puke it all out onto the page. Then, after at least 10 minutes of mind spewing, go back and see if there are any hidden gems in there. Don't censor yourself as you write. You want to get it all out onto the page. This is your raw material. Then, when you've free written for long enough, take all that good stuff and start crafting it into a song. Find that analytical mind and go back later and start to edit. Meditate. Om. <laughs> Meditation is my favorite. Whatever that looks like for you. There are lots of easy how-to videos on the internet. Check them out. The less you try and the less you think, the more you will allow yourself to be open to your own powerful creative intuition. Thomas Edison used to sit in a comfortable chair with a pen and paper nearby. He would hold a dinner plate in each hand over the edge of the arms of the chair and wait to doze off. Just as he was entering the twilight zone and about to fall asleep, he would drop the plates and the noise of it breaking would wake him up and he would write down whatever was going through his mind at that moment. He also tried 10,000 times before he actually got the light bulb to work. Have you tried to write 10,000 songs? Brainstorming. Brainstorming is a great way to expand an idea that you already have. Let's say you came up with this one great line, or you have a song subject, um, or a song you know that you want to write about. Write the line or the title at the top of the page. If you don't have a, a title, just use a working title until a title becomes clear. Then start writing all ideas that come to mind regarding that subject should make it on that paper. Don't worry about the idea's worth in that moment. Just get out any thoughts you possibly have on that given subject. Listen intently to songs and songwriters you like. Take what you like and leave the rest. If you like the chord progression of some song, use it and put it in your own song with your own unique style. If you like the instr instrumentation, borrow that. Mind mapping. Mind mapping is a great exercise for songwriting. Originally it was used as a business tool um, as shown here, but and it works great for songwriting too. Get a piece of blank paper and draw a circle in the middle. Write your song su subject in the middle, or your main idea, or your hook inside. Draw a branch off 
of the inner circle and write an idea in the circle that complements or supports that main idea in the middle circle. Do this multiple times, many times. Fill up the paper, deriving new ideas from each circle. And just fill up the page, circle by circle. Dare to write a song. Write a song about something you've never told anyone about. Dare prompts are designed to get you doing things you would never usually do with your songwriting. The challenge with these prompts is to follow through on the dare fully with all of your effort. Try it. I dare you. I double dog dare you. A picture tells a thousand words. Make a collage from photos, magazines, or graphics you pulled from the internet. Collages can feel like stills from a movie. What's this movie about? Is it a romantic comedy, a drama, a tragedy? Who's the protagonist, the villain? These cinematic prompts make for vivid stories. How you tell the story in your song is up to you. Song challenges and games. Song a day challenge. That's when you basically you challenge yourself, or I challenge you right now to do this. Write a song a day for seven days. Again, don't spend too much time thinking about their worth. Just get them out. Sometimes putting a short deadline on a song makes you rise to the occasion and write something you otherwise wouldn't. Or, in the same spirit, try writing a song in a sh short period of time, like 30 minutes, set a timer. Or, here's a fun game to play when you have three or more songwriters together in one room. This is an idea I got after watching a comedy improv group uh, do something similar. Give everyone three slips of paper. Have everyone write down one of the following things on each of those papers. Number one, song subject, like walrus or road rage. On the second piece of paper, write a song mood, like somber or happy. Um, and then on the third piece of paper, you're going to write a genre or a style of music, like polka or waltz. And then throw all the pieces of paper into three different hats and have each writer pick, a subject, pick from each hat a subject, a mood, and a genre. Then that's what their song is about. That's what they have to write about. So it could be a happy waltz about road rage. <laughs> Try these exercises for better lyric writing. You know those little refrigerator magnets with different words on them? Try and write a song using those. Here's a line I came up with using that method that I put in one of my own songs. It was from here and they did you only want. I walked out on the street, down the road, and up the block. Another fun lyrical word game is to cut up a bunch of words out of magazines and then put them together in, into a song or lyrics. Word sets. What we call word sets is a collection of 10 interesting words that when, that when put together begin to build a story. The mood is there. The setting and the characters. The challenge with a word set prompt is to write a song using as many of the 10 words as possible. Here's a set of 10 words I picked randomly for you to try it with. Morning. Sleep. Fresh, filtered, recall, nearly, written, forgotten, forgiven, and woven. So you could take all of those words and try to figure out how to make them into a song. Try these listening exercises for better musical ideas. Listen to Mozart. 
It's been proven to increase your musicality, and all you have to do is listen to it. I recently heard a pop song on the radio that used the exact melody line in the chorus of a Mozart song. Play t Here's another one. Play two or more radios at the same time, tuned to two different radio stations, and listen for interesting ideas for inspiration. Inside the chaos, you might pick up a unique idea. One of my favorite songwriters, Tom Waits, is known for developing this very strange, but apparently effective technique. All right, so my number one secret to great songwriting. Can you guess what it is? Well, your left brain, your left and right brain have different functions. The secret to writing a great song is to get them to work in harmony. First, use your left brain's intuitive nature and imagination, your creative mind, to tap into the flow state. No inhibitions, no rules, no wrong ideas, no itty bitty nitty committee. Get it all out. Then go back later once you've got all that out with your analytical mind and take on the editor's role to make sense of all the random thought, thoughts that you came up with. So, creative mind plus analytical mind in harmony. By using your creative mind first and your analytical mind second, use the best parts of your intelligence intelligently to make the best songs possible. All right, having a clear vision. It's important to get in touch with your vision. Having a clear vision will help sustain you. Take some time to journal and answer these three questions thoughtfully. It will be fuel for your creative fire. Question number one. Why is it important that I write music? Question number two. What will the world miss out on if I don't create music? Question number three. What parts of me get to be expressed through music or when I write music? Sometimes you write the song and sometimes the song writes you. Go write your song. Thanks for being with me. I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, check out the downloads and the links. There's lots of information today. And we'll talk soon.